I thought I'd start you off by showing you the supplies that I'll be using today. I have chili pepper cardstock, craft, rainforest, and white cardstock all from Lawn Fawn. I will also be using the Snowflake Trio stencil. I'm going to use the small snowflakes from the Snow Globe Scenes Shaker add-on die. This is the Scalloped Slimline with Hearts Portrait die. I will also be using the Snow Globe Scenes stamp set. So I have a couple scenes from here that I'll be stamping out. I'm also going to use the stamp set Over the Mountain Borders, the Little Reindeer and the Sleigh. Then I have Winter Skies and I'll be using a lot of those trees and the sentiment off of here as well. And also the Everyday Sentiment Banners die. I will also be using my scoreboard and the bone folder. And for inks, I have Yeti, Clear Embossing Powder, Jet Black, Spun Sugar, and Worn Lipstick Distress Oxide inks. I have my embossing tool, foam squares, my Lawn Fawn Liquid Glue, my Pokey Tool for my dies, my trusty tweezers, and some silver embossing powder. I also have my Tombow Tape Runner, some low tack tape and a couple blending tools and I also have my stamp chamois that I have set off on the side in my little case and I'll also be using some pixie spray which is another low tack adhesive. I'm going to start off by die cutting the front of my card so the piece with the hearts I'll be die cutting from craft and the scallop border I'm die cutting from chili pepper cardstock. I also have cut a couple pieces of white cardstock this first one is three inches by eight inches, which is going to be a nice border around my frame. And I also have a piece cut here that's two and three quarters by seven and three quarters. And that's going to fit just right behind my die cut heart panel. Now I'm starting with the Snowflakes Trio stencil. Now I personally like to use this pixie spray. It is a low tech adhesive that you spray on the back of the stencil and then you let it sit for just about a minute or two and it helps have your stencil stick to your paper. I prefer to use that when I have things like snowflakes or fine areas of a stencil and then I just place that down over my die cut panel and I'm also holding that stencil in place to the cardstock and my work surface with some low tech tape. Now I'm just taking a blending tool and I'm inking that up with some of the Yeti ink, dabbing off on the side to get any excess off so it doesn't come in real splotchy. And then I'm blending that on. That pixie spray is really helping hold those fine areas of the stencil down for me so I'm not catching it with my foam tool. I do go back and forth between blending uh, with a circular motion and dabbing. Then I can just peel back that stencil and I'm going to realign it down towards the bottom so I can add some snowflakes towards the bottom of my card. Making sure that's pushed down and held in place, I can just add a couple snowflakes to the bottom there. Then I'm going to move on to ink blending behind my heart panel. So this is the piece of white cardstock that's the smaller of the size. It's going to fit just right behind our die cut hearts. And what I did is I lined up the die cut hearts about where they would be on that white panel and kind of hovered over it with my blending tool and then just quickly pulled that away and I'm first adding spun sugar. Then I can come up above it with some worn lipstick just to have two different colors in the background. Now a lot of the background is going to get covered up but I really wanted to have something back there. And the reason I'm lining this up and kind of doing it in sections is I thought it would be just a waste of ink if I ink blended the entire panel. So that is why I'm using my die cut heart uh, front panel as a guide and just adding the ink where I really need it to be. I'll repeat the same steps uh, for these last two hearts and then once I'm done ink blending I'm just going to bring that panel in and make sure I have everything covered in there. I don't have any white spaces. Then I'm just taking a spritzer bottle with clear water and I'm adding droplets of water to that Distress Oxide background and dabbing that up with a paper towel. I just really like the look of this and it adds a little bit of interest and kind of breaks up that background a little bit. Then I'm going to move on to some Copic coloring. So I stamped out all of my images including a lot of extra trees. I stamped that in the Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink onto the Lawn Fawn white cardstock which I really love using for my Copic coloring. 
And once again, I'll have all of my colors listed at the top of the screen here for you that I use for the color combinations. I'm starting with my trees. I'll do a couple a couple of them on screen for you. And I'm, I am flipped my cardstock, obviously. I like to color my trees upside down. And I am adding just flicks of color to this. Starting with my darkest color, which is the G28, adding in the G07, and then the very bottom is going to be that YG23. When I need to have fine lines like this for my tree, it is best for me to hold my pen as straight up and down as I can so I'm getting the very tip of my brush marker. Now for the trunks of the tree, I'm bringing in E33 and I'm going to add a little bit of E37 to just one side of the tree trunk to give that kind of dimensional look. I'll move on to coloring my gingerbread house. I'm going to start with the darkest color, which is the E37, adding that right under where my roof is overhanging. That is where I foresee the darkest or the shadow area being, and then just blending out with the remaining colors. And I do use those same colors for the door, the chimney, and the gingerbread. Now, obviously, the chimney is really small, so I'll only add just a couple colors. But with the gingerbread, I did keep my shadow area to the left-hand side. That's kind of my default area when it comes to shading. As I move in to color the scarf, I'm just going to grab some of the greens that I used on the tree. So any of that combination would work. I have a little bit of red for the heart above the door. And then I have R21 and R24 for my little candy canes. And C2, I just added a little bit to the very bottom of the roof and right along that snowy hill line. Just to add a little bit of color there. I didn't need a lot. And I added some of that to the tips of the trees and to one side of my snowman. A little bit of yellow for my windows. And I did color in the orange for his carrot. I have N6 and N4 for the roof of my house, which is going to have a pink door. And I'm also going to add a little bit of brown in there for the chimney. And my house is going to be this really nice light green. So I used a G40 and a G43. Just adding that shadow area to where the roof is overhanging and blending it down. Now I'm showing you the coloring of the sleigh, but I did not end up using the sleigh. It just didn't fit in the scene that I was building. But I wanted to leave the coloring in here, in here for you just in case you wanted to see it. Then I moved on to coloring in my little reindeer. So I have E37 and these are going to be similar colors that I used uh, down for the gingerbread house. I think I just used the three color combo. You, you can see it's a really small image so you don't really need a lot. And then a couple of E40s to color in the face and the antlers. And I added yellow to the trim of my sleigh. My last piece here is this Christmas tree down at the bottom with all of the lights. So I used the same colors that I did on my previous trees, which was the G28, G07, and YG03. Just adding that little bit of flicks of color. Then I have some brown for the tree trunk, and I'll do yellow for the star, and just a, a red and a yellow for the lights on my tree. I didn't do any shading. It's a really small area, so you don't need to add a lot. Just pick whatever colors you prefer. Then I'm taking the coordinating dies. I'm going to line them up with all of the images and hold them in place with a low tack tape and run those through my die cut machine. So now I'm kind of just getting a lay of the land, so to speak, of what everything's going to look like and where it's going to fit. I know that my bigger piece that I had cut earlier, I can glue that down right away with the tape runner. And I have a rough draft here of what my card's going to look like. So now that I know where everything's going to be, I can stamp out my sentiments. And this is off of the winter skies. Now when I'm stamping them or lining them up, I'm making sure I have enough room because I'm going to be doing some die cutting from this. So I, I was kind of aware of my spacing. Then I prepped the cardstock with an anti-static powder tool. I'm going to ink that up with the embossing ink and stamp that down. This is rainforest cardstock that I'm using. And then sprinkling on some of the silver embossing powder from Lawn Fawn. Once my heat tool is nice and hot, I can bring it over to my cardstock and melt that embossing powder. And then what I like to do when this cools off for a few seconds is I'm going to take a Swiffer cloth and just a dust over that area. And that's going to help remove any of that anti-static powder that I had uh, used earlier and just kind of helps brighten this up a little bit. 
Now, something I've learned about myself is I am awful at cutting skinny strips and making them even. So I am using the Everyday Sentiment Banners and I'm lining that up over each of the sentiments that I had heat embossed. And then I'm taking that over to my paper trimmer and just cutting off the ends. Now, I know it's an extra step, but it really didn't take me that much longer. And I was able to make sure that these are just even in the center of those sentiment strips. Now that all the components of my card are ready, I can start working on the assembly. I'm going to start by putting a tape runner on the back of that craft cardstock panel, adding that all over, and then I can attach that to the ink blended panel that I had done. And you can see with the size that I used, no white edges are showing. Then I can start building my scenes. So I did make sure that I didn't have any adhesive right next to the hearts. That left me some wiggle room so I can tuck in all of my scenes. And these snow globe scenes fit perfectly within these hearts. You can kind of hide that the bottom half was for a snow globe. And I'm tucking in trees here and there. It was just something extra to add to the scene, help build it up a little bit. And that's total preference of whatever you'd like to do. I, I just really love adding trees to my winter cards. And I think it's really cute that these all look like they're set in the woods. So I did kind of peel up my house a little bit. I wanted to add a tree behind it. And then I do have a couple here towards the bottom that are going to be on the outside. Then I can add my tape runner to the back of this and add it straight down onto my slimline panel here. So I have that skinny white border around the edge and I really like that. I think that helps make everything pop a little bit more. Now all of my skinny sentiments that I die cut, I am lining on the back of them with foam tape to add a little bit of dimension and then adding them to the front of the card. So there's going to be a sentiment between each gap of the hearts and a top and the bottom. And this one's going to go just kind of right over by those trees. Now I thought this card needed just something a little bit more. So I had dug through my supplies and I found some snow globe uh, the scene shaker add-on and I found these really small little snowflakes. So I die cut a bunch of them from white cardstock and I'm going to add them around my hearts, uh, the scenes that I created just using my tweezers and the liquid glue. I kept them in odd numbers around my scene, had some kind of tucked under the sentiments a little bit, and I also made sure none of them were really lined up straight in a row. I didn't want that look on my card. I wanted them nice and scattered. Then I can show you how I created a card base for my card. So I have a piece of white cardstock that measures six and a half by eight and a quarter. I'm lining this up on my scoreboard and I don't have my cardstock pushed all the way to the top. I'm leaving a little bit of a gap so I can get my bone holder in there and I'm scoring at three and a quarter. Now obviously this is longer than my scoreboard so I just flip my cardstock and score at the other end and my score lines will meet. Then I can just fold my cardstock and I'm going to reinforce that fold so it's nice and crisp. I'm going to use my bone folder to do that. And I'm going to take my tape runner, add some tape to that. And then I can, I flip over my scallop and I'm going to line this up. Make sure your fold is on the right side. And I'm lining this up kind of just within the, those scalloped edges. So now we have a really nice card base to go with our scalloped borders. And I think this is so cute to add the hearts to a Christmas scene. They can really be used for anything, whether it's birthdays or anniversaries, not just Valentine's. So here's a close up look at some of the detail that I added with the Yeti ink and the scenes and how they're built in. And I'm really happy with how this card came out. I've really been enjoying making slimline cards. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you again soon.